my name is Gabby. I'm a boreal interpreter for the Lesser Slave Forest Education Society as well as the Lesser Slave Lake Bird Observatory. Today I'll be showing you how you can build your very own mini wetland or peatland in your schoolyard or your backyard. Since we're not able to take students out on field trips right now, we wanted to bring the wetlands to you. Before we get started, let's talk about why Alberta's wetlands are so important. Wetlands are incredibly diverse ecosystems that are home to many different wildlife, critter and plant species. Many species in Alberta rely on wetlands for survival, such as waterfowl like the mallard and the Canada goose, amphibians such as the tiger salamander and the northern leopard frog, and insects like dragonflies and damselflies. This means that if our wetlands disappear, it's likely these animals and insects will disappear too. Not only are wetlands home to a lot of our forest friends, but wetlands are crucial in supporting Alberta's freshwater systems. Wetlands or peatlands help protect the water quality and they provide water storage and filtration. Wetlands are essentially big natural water filters, sometimes being referred to as nature's kidneys. Wetlands are also very important to many First Nation and Métis people for cultural and traditional uses. All right, now that we know a little bit more about Alberta's wetlands, let's get started on building our very own mini wetland. We will need a few materials. We will need a plastic bin, no drainage holes are needed in the bin, with a 15 to 25 centimeter depth, small stones or gravel, flatter larger stones or twigs, freshwater or rainwater, wetland plants, peat, trowels, and gloves if you prefer. Once you have collected your materials or received the mini wetland package from the Lesser Slave Forest Education Society, we can get started on building. Step one, find a good spot for your wetland. Wildlife and critters are sensitive to sunshine, just like us humans. You wanna build your wetland in an area that gets some sunlight, but not full sunlight all day. Ensure you build your mini wetland in an area that is not frequently disturbed, bumped or played in. If the wetland is disturbed often, it's unlikely that you'll get visitors. You can choose to leave the bin above ground or you can dig the bin into the ground. If the bin is dug into the ground, this helps the critters climb in and out of the mini wetland more easily. If you choose to build above ground, ensure that there's access in and out of the bin by stacking larger stones and twigs. Step two, start preparing your wetland. The first thing we add to our wetland is gravel. The purpose of adding gravel is to create small pockets for water storage. Next, we add some bigger stones and twigs to our wetland. These stones and twigs help our critters climb in and out comfortably. Step three, fill your wetland with fresh water. We want to make sure that we're using fresh water from either rain, snowmelt, creeks, or ponds. Anything that has added chemicals, like town water, can be harmful to our visiting critters. So we want to make sure we're using fresh and natural water only. Let's fill our bin to about halfway full for now and we can check on our water levels in a few days. Step 4. It's time to add some wetland plants. These wetland plants are from Tree Time in Edmonton, Alberta. Plants help filter our wetlands, so of course we're going to add a few stems to our mini wetland. We have some tamarack, some common Labrador tea, and some bog cranberry. We're just going to place two to three stems in our bin. Plants and wetlands also provide food and shelter for all sorts of critters. Now let's add some of my favorite stuff, peat. This peat was graciously donated to us for this program from Aurora Peat Products in Edmonton, Alberta. Peat is made of dead organic plants collected from certain wetlands, specifically bogs, also known as peatlands. Let me show you why peat is so neat. The peat from our bogs absorbs more water than even natural sponges found in the oceans. Peat is so important for wetlands and our mini wetland as peat stores extra water. And the final step, step five, watch and wait. Sit back, relax and wait for visitors. 
Leave your mini wetland outside for at least a week and observe the different critters that visit your wetland. You can leave the bin outside for even a month and observe how your wetland changes over time. Your mini wetland may develop a blanket of algae, but as the ecosystem develops, other plants and critters should help keep that mini wetland clear. Do not remove insects or animals with your hands as diseases may spread this way. Only remove critters using skimmers or cups. If you're lucky, nature will take over and you'll see other visitors such as frogs, birds, butterflies, bats, toads, dragonflies, and damselflies. Some other things you can do to help encourage critters to visit your mini wetland are create a frog or a toad home next to your wetland, introduce some insect friendly flowers in and around your wetland, you could also set up a critter hotel so the critters can have a little bit of extra shade. Thank you so much for watching our mini wetland tutorial. Good luck and have fun observing.